I was asked if there's an easy way to create a hexagon grid, and of course there is. So let's imagine that you had something like this. inside there all right so what we're going to do is make sure that you have in preferences in add-ons search for extra objects add mesh so this one here add mesh extra objects make sure that you've got that enabled and then shift a under mesh come down to extras and choose honeycomb click that now before you do anything open up this panel here and now you can make some adjustments so we can adjust the number of rows for this we can adjust the number of columns all right you can adjust the size here so let's say i make this small like this Adjust my edges. I'm holding shift as I do this. Increase the number of rows. So I'm just going to get it so that it's larger than my circle. Let's say that's the size that I like. Okay, keeping in mind I can still come back here and I can adjust this. I want it larger than my inner circle. Just like that. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to give this some thickness. So I'm going to come over here to the wrench and modifier. I'm going to choose solidify. And now I can pull this. I'm going to hold shift again. So I move in smaller increments until I get the thickness that I like. Let's say I like that thickness. I'm going to go ahead and apply the solidify modifier. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. And look from the side. Trying to get that right in the middle there. And I'm going to add the bevel modifier. And of course, this is going to increase my polys, but I'm just going to add a few segments. Shade smooth. Let's say I like that. Okay. But I obviously don't want it sticking out on the sides. I want the grid right in the middle here. So the way that I'm going to cut these extra pieces off. So I'm going to come into my main object here, and in edge selection, I'm going to choose an edge, maybe there, or maybe I'll come out a little further, and I'll select that edge, I'll just hide that. Okay, let's select that edge, and I, I don't want my grid to go past that edge. So I'm going to copy that edge, Shift D, pull it up, P, and break it out, and now this is a separate object. I don't need the subdivision surface on it, so I'll turn that off. I'm going to go into edit mode, A to select it, F to make a face. And then I'm going to extrude it, E to extrude, and I'm going to pull it down. So essentially I've made a cylinder, but it's of the, just the correct dimensions. Okay. I'm going to hide my original circle, so I'll select it in H. So I've got this. I want my grid just to occupy this area, so I'm going to select my grid here. And I'm going to do a Boolean. I'm going to pull that up to the top. But I'm going to choose Intersect. Boolean Intersect. And with the eyedropper, I'm going to choose the cylinder. Now my grid just intersects with that cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and apply. And now I can delete this cylinder. And I've got my grid cut. Just like that. Alt-H. Bring back my original circle. 
and I now have a hexagonal grid um, inside inside here. Turn the subdivision back on. Let's turn on the cavity shader. And there we go. One thing you should always do is select check that our faces are facing the right way. And as you can see, this is red and this is blue. These polys are facing the wrong direction. So go in, Alt N, recalculate outside. Now everything is blue. Face orientation, done. Just hide that for now. So I have a nice uh, grid in here. Um, I can still take this and I can scale it a little bit if I'm not perfectly satisfied with that. Okay, and the same thing goes for if you wanted to do a rectangular grid, let's say you're doing a grid floor, just the one thing to do is keep in mind, let's look at statistics, that this will have a lot of polys in it. All right, so if I take that and I hide it, let's look at the vertices here, hide it. You know, I've got 8,700 and so or so. Uh, from here, Alt H, bring it back, 17. Okay, so it will increase uh, your polys. But if I wanted a, a floor panel, let's say, let's say, let's say make a plane, go in, hide inset, pull that in a little bit, and we'll delete that face. Take this and just extrude it up. Let's say I just I just want it uh, something like that. I'll go ahead. I'll put a bevel on this. I'll bring it up to maybe three. And, uh, zero point zero two. Let's say we'll shade smooth. And we'll do a couple of other things. Let's try angle, and let's try under geometry arc. So we rouse this a little bit more. Uh, if your shading is looking a little funny. Uh, you can come over here and do weighted normal and just under normal auto smooth. So that's done. So now I want my 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 grid in there. All right. So Shift A, mesh, extras, honeycomb, and like once again you can then adjust uh, the number of rows that you want. It's like the array modifier, but just notice as we do this the vertices count here okay so I just want it past there the number of columns okay and maybe I'll make this one really small but we'll increase our polys of course as we do this okay I'm holding down shift each time oops I lost I lost it do that again Okay, so it's remembering my last selection as well, my last use. Um, let's come over here to the solidify. Give it a little bit of thickness. Let's, let's say that I'm satisfied with that. Apply that. And I'm going to drag it up into the middle. And I'll shade smooth. And I'll put on a bevel. We can try geometry on this arc, and let's say that, that we're happy with that. Okay, so we're going to cut out the extra stuff we don't need. So for a cutting tool, I'm going to choose, maybe I'll choose this edge here, right here, and Shift D, move it out of the way, P to break it out, and on this object, slip down, maybe I'll scale it just a little bit into around the middle here so I'll cut my grid and make sure that it goes into my into my rectangle there I have to make a face eat extrude and just I just have to come through my grid here um, I don't really need any of these modifiers on on this which will move my cutting tool so I'll just I'll just do that let's take this and hide it so I'm going to use this to cut so I'm going to select my grid here and I'm going to add a modifier boolean, drag it to the top. I'm going to choose intersect again with the eyedropper. I want it to intersect with this rectangle and I will apply it. I can then delete that rectangle, Alt H to bring that back, and I've got this. Okay, now we're 
uh, got both of these showing. I'm up pretty high with polys. If I hide that one, you can see this is 28,000. Now you would never want to use this uh, and, and just duplicate it to make a floor or something. Let's say I just duplicate Shift D. You can see that I've gotten quite high uh, with my polys uh, already. Uh, if you did need to spread this out over a floor, something like that, you could take this and go M, make it a collection, and just call it a grid or something like that. All right, and make sure that my origin is right there. And then what you can do is you can shift a collection instance grid. And you could now do this. And my vertices will not increase. The only thing is snapping is a little weird. Uh, with these collection instances, but if I do another one, I can now at this point just shift D, pull it out, and I'm staying at 28,000. Shift D, you can do another one. All right, so you could place them around uh, your your room or whatever. Let's check my face orientation, which looks good. And it's a very simple way to make a uh, hexagonal or honeycomb-like pattern, um, and in this case, I'm not increasing my polys.